Welcome to the American Wood Shop. Today we're going to build a beautiful console table out of walnut, contemporary design. But whatever you do, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with all the tools and products you use. That being said, let's have some fun. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. Today we're using very wide walnut boards, air-dried with live edges and sapwood to create a contemporary table that will be auctioned to raise money for a scholarship for woodworkers at Rio Grande University. Now, what we're doing is using a track saw, and let's get right into it here. Have great building dust extraction into a HEPA filter. And what I'll do is use the long track to rip straight edges on the walnut board so they can be milled down. Okay, now the beauty of a track saw with a good blade is you can get a glue edge right off of that. And that is when we glue up the slabs to make the tabletop. And so from here, I'll get the other boards up on here and I'll do a series of cross cuts with the shorter track to rip the work pieces to the length that I need and then I'll also rip down the edges so that we have good glue joints and then from there we can take it over to the planer. I have two bench top tools. This is a bench top helical head planer with carbide cutters. It does a phenomenal job, 15 amp, and a bench top jointer. Both extremely affordable and excellent tools to use. Um, but here we go. Let's plane it down. Dust extraction going. So now, let's see what we have here. Of course, all bench top tools are clamped down. Woo, yeah. Oh boy. Look at this. That's a beautiful flame figure right there. That's gorgeous on the thick stock. So now I'll just plane down the thick material and then taking light passes. I don't rotate that more than three quarters of a twist or turn. And we'll get it all planed down. And once I have everything planed, it's over to the workmen to do the glue up. Boy, that's looking beautiful. And we're using the bark inclusion to really make this natural edge or live edge tabletop pop even more. And we'll put a mirror coat finish on top of it, which is amazing, bulletproof. But right now, see this edge right here? Well, when I'm doing a glue joint right here like that, that seam has to be perfect. And to do that, I use a jointer, and in this case, a bench top jointer. And the most important thing is to use a good push block to hold the flat of the board against that perpendicular fence. The fence is square to the bed of the joiner, and I joint those edges nice and straight. And that's what gives me the ability to do these beautiful glue joints. Hearing plugs are in now, and about every 12 inches I've made a white mark across this butted joint, and what I'll do now 
where that white mark interfaces is I will make biscuit cuts. And most of you have seen this before. It has a cutter that creates an arc and you hold the fence flat to the board, make the cut, and then you put a couple drops of glue in the slot and you tap in this number 20 biscuit. You do the mating cut to the mating board and then once all of those cuts are made on the board so you can have a total of five number 20 biscuits on this seam, I brush out good wood glue along both edges, let that tack for about two minutes, and then I draw it all tight with heavy duty parallel action clamps. And I alternate the clamps. One is on the top surface, then the next one is underneath the glue up to level out the clamping forces. And I make sure the boards are flat as that glue cures out. Now I do exactly the same process for the thicker bottom board that the legs will go on to. I use the biscuits, excellent wood glue, and clamp that up and I let both of those cure out for two hours. While that's done, let's go to the bandsaw. These are the legs that we're going to cut out to support the table. And I need the long grain here and where this is the end grain where there's not strength because the grain's running this way instead of that way, I have to make this thicker. And I'll sculpt these down. And I've traced out this pattern on pieces of walnut that have problems. This is loaded up with knots, heart pith, heart checks. Here's good long grain here, gets around the defect there, and I'm just going to cut on the outside edge of the line and then take it outside to sculpt it down. So I'll make all four legs now on the bandsaw and then it's outside to profile it. It looks good. The next step is to knock off this glue bead and this is a card scraper that's dull as a box of rocks. And so I put it into the front vise, I take a single cut Nicholson mill bastard file and I just make that edge 90 degrees to the flat. And I feel for burr needs another pass. This is like jointing wood, that's sharp on that side, that's sharp on that side. Now let's see what happens. When I come over here to knock this off with that sharp edge, you can see the shavings floating away. So this is the best way to clean all this up. And I do want this to be clamped up for another hour to make it strong. So we really have more profiling work to do on those legs, but I needed to get this off now. If I waited until it was rock hard, say in an hour, this would not work. Okay. I'll get this done then outside. I love to use the right tool for the job and in this case to profile these legs and ease them over, this is what I use to sculpt. And you can see when I turn that tungsten carbide cutter on, you can see through the edge because the holy galahad, as it's called, lets you do that. So as long as I have my hand on the handle and hand on the body and my elbows to my side, I'm in complete control. So I'll profile the legs, let the wind help me out with dust collection, N95 dust mask, and work with the cutter. After I use the tungsten carbide cutter to break the hard edges here, 
on the outside of the curve, I can sand it down working with 80 grit and then use a couple other sanders to profile the legs to perfection. Very soon, this leg will get a shelf that actually helps to hold this assembly all together. The inside is rounded over, the outside that retains a crisp or hard line edge. So more on the legs later, it's on to the top that I took the clamps off of and I'm bringing the tracks all over and I will just cut this to a finished 60 inch length. Okay, now, the beauty of using a track saw, look at that glue joint, nice and strong, okay, is that you can cut these large panels perfectly. Now cut the other end and do the same for the shelf work piece and then I'll do some sanding with good dust extraction on, get this perfect, tack the surface clear and prepare the mirror coat, which is a phenomenal finish. I'm using mirror coat, which is a two-part mix by System 3, and so basically what I'm going to do is take the resin, and I'm going to bring it up to 16 on the fill level here of this plastic bucket, and then put the cap right back on, that's very important, and now I'm going to put the hardener. And I want to put eight ounces of hardener in there, which means I'd bring it up to 24 or thereabouts. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, set this safely aside, and I'm to stir this thoroughly and work in a well ventilated place. Be sure to wear gloves. And this mirror coat, I don't want to put bubbles into it, but I want the chemicals to be blended. It really is the best, most durable top. This is going to be like a high coffee table, something for meals when we're watching TV, a little bit higher than a coffee table, something graceful, something that you have a storage shelf down below for, and anyways, here's what goes on. It's thoroughly stirred now, and that's key. And these bark inclusions were sealed with timber mate and then sanded to perfection. Surface preparation is very important here. And so what I'm going to do is pour this out and then spread it around, and it's self-leveling. But you do want to move out very quickly. And so I'm coating the center of this area. And then a unique quality of all of this is that if there are air bubbles, and I'll brush this out with a brush that really is thrown away at the end of this, that bark inclusion looks really good. I want to do this fast enough that it doesn't drag out and doesn't give me good coverage, and I don't want to push any contaminants or bubbles into this, so I'm working to the outside edge, and it self-levels, which means it's being absorbed right now by those bark inclusions, and I do move out to the edges. And this will start hardening very quickly. Okay, and the nice thing about it, the aroma will not chase you out of the shop. But again, work in a very well ventilated area. So I'll brush this out, and there is no cleaning this brush when this is done. And if there is one key to this, it is move quickly 
and have a plan, work from the center out, work to the edges, and then as the thicker part of this resin levels, you might get some drips and runs over the edge. But this is looking really good. So I'll brush this out, and then in about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how you can get rid of air bubbles with a propane torch. It's pretty neat. Okay, according to directions, what I'm doing about five inches back, I'm using the heat to get rid of any air bubbles that were formed when the chemical reaction started. And it does a fine job of that. You want to keep it moving. And really, that's the only area that had a few. So I'm going to let it be. Everything else, well, there are a few down here, and that makes them disappear. This is kind of fun. <laughs> okay, so I'll get this perfected, and then it's over to work on the base. This is one of the four identical legs that were sculpted outside. You saw that earlier. And I need to use this template to drill the mortises that are an inch and a quarter, and that's at the drill press in a little bit. But for now, you have to see how this whole table design works. I'll swing this around, and this is a shelf board for the console table to put DVD players on, things like that. And you can see the way this works, the legs flare out. So when this side is finished, we can slab the top right on top of the legs. It's beautiful. And this shelf just slides straight out like that. No screws, no fasteners, that's so cool. It's beautiful. But the key to this are the tenons that we're going to cut to fit the mortises in the curved legs. And to cut those tenons, that's a matter of using the wood lathe. I have a billet, that's what these turning squares are called. Inch and three quarters square, 19 inches long. And it's locked between centers and an inch and 9 sixteenths back, I have a white line. Now I'll turn this on, and I want it at 1,200 RPM. Let it come up to speed. And the cool thing on this lathe, I can dial in exactly the speed that I want to work with the wood. Now watch this. Face shield on, no rings, work safely here. And I just ease that bowl gouge this is a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, meaning the flute is 3 8 of an inch. And I knock those sharp corners off, create a nice sweep. And now what I can do, turn it off, and I can bring up the square carbide cutter to create a perfect tenon. And here's the tenoning tool, it's just a wrench, inch and one quarter. So I'll cut this down, test it, and create that tenon that's going to be an inch long. So nothing could be easier here. Very simple. Now I do need to keep this cutting edge right at the center line. And I take it right on down. I think I'm there. Let's check the size. Needs to go down a hair more. It wouldn't be a good idea to put that wrench on there with it spinning. That's obvious. Let it come up to speed. And I'll just work my way until I get those tenons sized perfectly. And that's how you cut the tenons. Now with this square cutter, keep it level to the ground, flat to the tool rest and you just go straight in, right at center line. Let's check that out. Turn that off. Oh yeah, now that's perfect. You want a good tight fit. And you could use calipers here, but you can't beat a wrench like that. And I'll do the same thing to the other end, and then it's over to the drill press. This is my layout template, and from this point to that center, it's 14 and a half inches. The thickness of the slab, then another hole on center. 
okay, to lock that slab, the cantilever slab. So by using that template with the Forstner bit with it all, lining it up on the bottom and on the top edge, I can then go in and make my hole exactly where it needs to be, press it in, and I did that in both places. And now what I can do is use a clamp, and boy, it amazes me on large work pieces how some people refuse to clamp their work pieces down. It's just like, what are you thinking? You know, you gotta control that work piece. So that's right on my mark. That is now locked in place right there. Two clamps on this large piece are required. Get it in on the edge, like so. Now I just drill that hole. And I give the bit a chance to carry away the sawdust, the chips, the shavings. Go until it stops. There we go, that's perfect. And I do the same thing on the other side. And never adjust this with the bit spinning. That's poor form, that'd be unsafe. So I'll get this locked in like that. Setting the right speed for large bits is critical. Okay, that's locked in. That's locked in, and we'll finish this. Once this is drilled, it's on to a little bit of sanding, and then we'll get some finish on this. I brought in the pro finisher, Susie, <laughs> okay. Now, what are you using and why are you using it? Well, I'm tacking off the wood first after you've sanded it, and then I'm using just a nice teak oil. It's a great penetrating finish and protects the wood. Okay, and surface prep is key, so before she does the finishing, I sanded and I used a random orbital sander. I worked through 100, uh, 150, and finally 220 grits. And I used that to just ease over the sharp edges on the stretcher that we have the turn tendons on. And I also did the final sanding with that. And this has a really smooth action, so there's no pigtail or squiggles with this in the wood. Okay, now that's all sanded and finished, I made sure Scott cleaned up around the area so all that fine dust is gone. And I'm gonna start wiping on the teak oil. And boy, look at that great finish. So you're just using a 100% all cotton rag, you know, an old t-shirt you can cut up and just smooth it in there. And this really is a good penetrating oil. Look at that, a walnut's really coming alive. I'll get Charge some more it on up. up there. And on the bottom of the piece that we use the mirror coat finish on, teak oil goes on that. It has to be sealed all the way around because if it isn't the entire assembly, it's a glue up, it would warp. So encapsulate that wood with finish top and bottom. So teak oil it is and from here, Susie, once you get everything done, mm -hmm. we put a little bit of glue on the tenons and draw it all together and assemble the parts. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. The finish is dried and Inside of the mortise on the legs, I have put glue, uh, really good wood glue that I brush out with an acid brush, none on the tenon, because it's such a tight fit, it would just screed off as you push it in, and then Susie uses a mallet to bring it all together. Now, before the glue cures completely, you want the shelf board that is the counterbalance to this whole assembly in so that you can level up the stretchers to the board and make it rock solid. And you could, once you have it positioned exactly the way you want it, you could put screws in from the bottom, but you don't need it, okay? Yep, don't really have to. And on the bottom of the top, you can see screws here and here yep. to hold cleats. On either end, to and those stabilize just go on the top. Glue up. Right. Okay. And there you go. And it's the I natural it. edge of the walnut there, the sapwood, the bark inclusion here, walnut on the back edge. This is a slab top out of a glue walnut. You just can't beat it, very graceful. Love it, it's gonna be a great coffee table or put a TV on it, whatever you'd like. It's the right height. Now, on to the next show. 
beautiful chair. So join us next week. Thanks for being with us. See ya. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For every woodworking reason, for every woodworking age, Rikon Power Tools, Pro Tools for Tool Pros. RikonTools.com, proud supporters of American wood shops everywhere. For more information behind the scenes at the American Wood Shop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Singing, hey, ho, and away we'll go on the